Welcome to the first monthly reads video that I have done in a while. The last one I did was in July. Yeah, I kind of stopped doing them for a while because there was a lot of hecticness in the months. After that, I was getting used to some new routines, being a working student and all. Yeah. If you can see some smoke coming out from my candles, just ignore it. I'm keeping an eye on it. It's at the end of the candle now, but I really like the smell of it and I wanted I wanted to smell it while filming this video. So in February, I read three books and let's talk about them. So the first book I read was The Cloisters by Katie Hayes. And I gave this four stars. I think more specifically 3.5. I actually did a reading vlog for this and I will be writing a blog post for it as well. So it's dark academia and there's magical realism and it's a mystery. Uh, we follow this young woman who's a recent graduate who studied Renaissance art and she grew up in this small town called Walla Walla in Washington and she moves to New York for this summer uh what is it called it wasn't an internship but it was something along those lines at the Met Museum but something falls through and she ends up at the Cloisters which is a real museum in New York as well dealing with more unique rare occultish artifacts I forget again because I read this like a month ago and I'm filming this video pretty late but she sort of gets absorbed into the world of tarot and making discoveries and there's sort of this um, toxic relationship between her and this other woman who she only gets into because she's lonely and she never really had true female friendships in her life and it was just interesting to see her navigate that and there's a lot of unraveling of the mystery at the end that I really liked um, some people say it was predictable and that they didn't enjoy it that much but I liked it personally because it was very atmospheric um, there was a lot of sensuality, it's dark academia, which I forget if I said already. It was just what I liked in a novel, I like to be absorbed into the world of like archival stuff. Um, I would say it's medium paced, but I just liked the atmosphericness of it. So yeah, if you like dark academia and magical realism and perhaps tarot and art, and mystery then you would like this book and the second book i read in february was the atlas six which i also did a reading vlog for i did a reading vlog for all the books i was reading in february actually um i gave this book one star i mean i wasn't gonna i didn't like the book needless to say but i still gave it one star because I think it deserved one star for the concept because basically the premise of the novel is like the library of Alexandria didn't actually burn down and there's this secret society that's maintaining it and everything and keeping the knowledge and every, I think every five years, I forget, but every few years they initiate a new group of very talented people who can do magic. It's also magical realism to sort of keep it going. So I thought that was cool. A lot of people don't know this, but actually the real library of Alexandria didn't all get burned down. They did keep parts of it and it did persevere for a while, but I don't know what happened to it after that. I didn't go that deep into researching that yet but i thought that was fascinating so i thought the premise was cool that was very very cool in a book it was dark academia and there was magic and it seemed like everything i would like but 
boy was I wrong because so there's this man called Atlas who basically initi like recruits seven people actually oh my god seven people <laughs> um but and then they do this sort of training thing for a year and then at the end of the year they have to eliminate someone to keep going so then the book was too focused on that i think just the relationships between those seven people and they're all very unlikable which i i know sometimes that's the point but i don't really think it was the point for this book like they all seemed very conceited and petty and they were characterized like wattpad teenagers but some of these characters are like in their late 20s or or mid 30s so the characterization was weak i just really didn't like that it was very character focused and not in a strong way and we didn't actually get to see anything happening like about the library of alexandria i just didn't like it um but that's still not to say it wasn't a cool premise it just helped me learn as a writer what not to do and how not to write so I thought that was good. Um, I mean, it's. I feel like I can see that the author, Olivia Blake, is a good academic writer, maybe. She knows how to write, like, but not in a character way, if that makes sense. So I think it would be cool to see where she goes and how she grows through her writing in the future because that's also very cool to see, as I've said before. I thought it was very cool to see Lee Bardugo's writing improve from Shadow and Bone to her books now. Like, it's very inspiring. So nothing against Olivia Blake. And the last book I read in February was Eileen by Otessa Moshveg. And I first talked about this book back in my mid-year freak out book tag freak out tag um last summer and then i was like i'm gonna read this book by the end of the year but then i didn't and i also talked about it in my fall tbr which i haven't i didn't do like review videos for any of those books because like i said it was a hectic time but i did like a lot of them and i would want to go back and reread and then talk more about them then but anyways, this book was a four-star read for, for me. I recently did a review for it on my Instagram, but I feel like I'm going to post that on my blog as well. Just to get more exposure because most people don't read long Instagram captions, which is sad. And I spent a while on that review. Anyways, this is a very unique book. I've never read a book like Eileen. We follow Eileen Dunlop, a young woman who is very discontent with her life in this little town which she calls Exville and it's set during Christmas time, like the end of the, the year. There's a lot of snow and coldness which adds to the sort of uncomfortable... This is not a cozy, like, cheery christmas novel let me just say that it's very suffocative is how i put it in my book review although it still has it's still very like there's this mysterious air you want to see what's going to happen eileen does say very early on that she is plotting an escape to a big city new york and like, she doesn't want to live this life anymore. She has a abusive father and just she's, she doesn't like anything about her life. And I, I don't want to say too much, but uh, I can say that just when she's about to finally disappear, as she says, this new director of education at the boys' prison that Eileen works at comes. Her name is Rebecca St. John and she changes her life basically kind of and that's all i can say uh but yeah it really just keeps you reading because you want to know 
what happens next. And it's told from the perspective of a much older Eileen. So it's like reflective. It's gazing back. I can't think of the word right now for it. <laughs> yeah, that was Eileen. This is my first Otessa Moshveg book. I'll be reading My Year of Rest and Relaxation next, which is one of the books in the pile of books you are sitting on right now. But yeah, that's everything I read in February. Um, I hope you enjoyed, and I'm very excited for the next few months of book wrap-ups because I have some exciting books that I'm planning on reading and I'm just so excited to read them for the first time and talk about them and be excited about them. So thank you for joining me today and I will see you in the next video.